Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna do an iPhone 15 Pro Max review. I'm currently in London. It's probably a bit windy. So we're gonna probably have to take this inside and talk all about the pros, the cons, and the differences with the iPhone 14 Pro. But first, let's talk about the lineup for the iPhone 15. You got the iPhone 15, the Plus model, then the 15 Pro, and the Pro Max. And low stipulation with the Pro Max only starts at 256 gigs. So you have to budget a little bit more this year for it if you're trying to go for the base model. Now, I always go for 256 gigs. So this was right in line with what I was planning on getting anyway. But it is unfortunate for those of you who didn't want to spend the extra $100. Now, let's get into some more of the specs. The iPhone 15 Pro has the a17 Pro chip, whereas the iPhone 15 normal model actually has last year's chip, the A16 Bionic. And again, some other differences with the Pro are the Pro Motion display, so 120 hertz, goes down to 1 hertz, and 2000 nits of max brightness on the display. And you get the updated cameras, 48 megapixels for the main camera, and on the Pro Max, the 5X zoom. Uh, what else? Well, you also get a titanium build, which is pretty much all of the marketing that they use for the iPhone 15. And there are some troubles with overheating that I can do a test to because whenever I'm charging mine, it gets extremely hot or with certain tasks as well, like recording videos and such which is normal, but I feel like on this phone, it's just doing it a little too much. Um, yeah, as far as other differences, the Dynamic Island is no longer one of those, so the regular iPhone 15 model also has that. And of course, with the Pro Max, you have a very large battery. And I've noticed better battery life, obviously coming from a regular size Pro model, but not as great as I thought. I've been recording video here in London throughout the day uh, during this week, and noticed I will get down to single digit battery at times having been at 100% around 11 a.m. so I thought that was quite interesting I thought it would last longer but of course I am taking 4k 60 video so that might attribute to the battery loss some other differences include the UW2 chip the ultra wide 2 chip which means you can find things that are lost, such as your iPhone, Apple Watch, or AirTags, a bit easier. And you also get the updated construction, which means when you want to replace the back or front glass, it should be cheaper, going from $550 to $200. Although, uh, there have been reports that the back glass does break a bit easier. And so, I've been wearing a case on my phone all throughout the week while I'm traveling, because I don't want to risk it breaking while I'm here. Although, I haven't dropped it, thank goodness, knock on wood. <laughs> but yeah, not a huge difference as far as visually, other than maybe some thinner bezels on the screens of the Pro models. But let's get into the pros and cons of the 15 Pro Max. So let's talk about some of the pros of the iPhone 15 Pro. Well, the screen looks awesome. The pictures look great. The speakers are surprisingly an improvement they're they're quite good actually and what else well i gotta talk about the battery life which is a pro and a con but essentially the battery has been a lot better than if i had my 14 pro but considering that this is the 15 pro max i thought it'd be a lot longer now the other pros the action button is nice but i haven't been using it as much as i thought i would i configured it to my camera and to go straight to video which I have used when sometimes when I remember to use it but most times I still go and like on the on the lock screen just open the camera app so maybe it's just a habit and I need to work on using it more so that it becomes something I use more often but currently not really that functional for me I do want to mention I am on vacation and I have been most of the time that I had this phone so when I get home I'll probably end up using 
the action button with the Tesla app using the shortcuts because now you can use shortcuts with this action button which makes it very versatile. So for some people this might be a game changer and for some it might just end up still being the ringer button. But I, I know I can unlock the car, turn on the air conditioning, you know, functions like that. So I want to try that out when I get home. Can't do it right now, but definitely something to keep in mind that my experience might not be yours because it's a very customizable button that you can use it for almost anything. All right, so of course you see the wonderful camera quality of the front camera as I film this whole video. The HDR is doing its job. You can see the clouds and you can still see the shard over there and, and, and still see my face. So obviously it's really good. But let's get to the cons of this phone because the camera is part of it. One of the cons I've noticed, and this was like within the first day, was trying to take low light photos. Sometimes the low light photos would come out extremely grainy. And since the one or two updates that we've had since this phone has come out, it has improved it some, but it's just feels as though the low light performance might be worse than the 14 Pro. And especially when you use that 5X camera, it sometimes won't even switch to it. It'll stay on the 1X and just crop in digitally. And so it looks extremely poor. Or if you do use the 5X camera at night, it's very noisy, very grainy. And so that's very unfortunate. However, I have seen that it's improved a little bit with, uh, 17.0.2 I believe it is and so you know we'll see how it goes as time progresses perhaps they can fix a lot of the issues with software so that is kind of an unfortunate thing I've noticed is that a lot of times the photos are better but there are the few times where the photos do look a bit worse than the previous phones and I'm trying to figure out why that might be it could be just possibly because of the uh the higher megapixel count and they have it calibrated for that correctly although we did have the 40 megapixel camera before now the pros are shooting natively in 24 megapixels instead of 12 so they're bidding down to half instead of the 12 megapixels so that might be part of it i'm not sure but hopefully they can fix that in the software now some other cons of the phone again the overheating issue has been a little bit concerning because as you know, heat will cause the battery to degrade faster. I already had pretty bad battery degradation on my iPhone 14 Pro, which I only had for a year. Um, I, trade, I, I try to trade it in whenever I get the new phone. And so in just that year, it was down to 87% on the battery health, which is not good. <laughs> That's very abnormal, but apparently not abnormal for other 14, Pro users. So maybe don't buy a 14 Pro used unless you know it, it has had its battery replaced. Um, on the other hand, the 15 Pro Max, the battery has not been that great. I mentioned this earlier in the video, but you know, people on 13 Pro and 14 Pro Max, sorry, I'm talking about Pro Max right now, but it's just a lot of words to say. <laughs> but on the in these larger phones would get sometimes two, even three days of battery life on a light use, but heavy use, maybe two days. And so to be able to only barely squeeze out one day of uh, battery use is very interesting. Uh, I'm gonna keep testing it and seeing how it goes as time progressive progresses, maybe with software updates, they fix this issue. But I've noticed it's, it's not that good. It's, I mean, it's, it's good enough to get me through the day, but just barely. So that's a bit concerning for long term as the battery degrades over time and hopefully it doesn't degrade as much as it did with the previous iPhone 14s. So I'm gonna put the build quality in the cons category. I do like that the iPhone 15 is a lot lighter than the 14, and I'm talking about Pro Maxes here because using the Pro Max version of any of the previous stainless steel ones compared to the titanium one you do notice a big difference in weight even though on paper it might not seem like it it is and it helps so when i was buying this phone 
obviously I had both the Pro in titanium and the Pro Max in the blue color and I'm talking about the natural titanium color and I was considering keeping the smaller one but because the bigger one was so much lighter I'm okay with it because I do appreciate having more battery life but one of the cons is that it scratches more easily the titanium if you have any of the finishes on it black white or the blue color will scratch more easily and you're gonna notice that if you don't use a case and the other thing is that I for the first time <laughs> bought Apple care I've never bought Apple care before but I did this year because apparently the back glass is very easy to break because of the new architecture of having aluminum underneath to make it easier to replace the back it also breaks easier so there will be more replacements which is a cheeky thing that Apple has done but in any case um, that's something to keep note of if you don't use a case I like to not use a, a case so this will be something I have to consider uh, other than that I think the 15 Pro is a nice evolution of the iPhone lineup, but not anything revolutionary. My verdict is, if you have a 13 or 14, don't upgrade. It's not worth it. It's pretty much the same phone, other than having USB-C, which I had to buy some adapters for because some of the things I use were lightning, but it's okay. I have a lot of USB-C stuff, because iPad Pro, Max, and all that, they all use USB-C, so now I can charge all of those with the same cable. But for someone like me who records all their videos on an iPhone, having that faster transfer speed might be quite beneficial. As previously, I was using AirDrop to get them onto my MacBook, and now I might just be able to plug it in. I'll have to go get a USB-C 3.0 cable to be able to do this, but to transfer videos much more quickly to the MacBook to get to editing. But I haven't yet tried out any of the gaming features with these updated games that are console level games, but maybe I'll make a video in the future about that. That's my verdict on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Don't get it if you don't need to. And if you do get it, it's quite good. So subscribe, like, catch me in the next videos where I'll be going over the Apple Watch Ultra 